Okay, so the second half of this chapter and the stuff that's going to be on your test involves absolute values. So we looked at both absolute value equations and inequalities. Now, the key thing to remember here is that absolute value represents a distance. So you can always count either to the right in the positive direction or to the left in the negative direction. That's why for every single absolute value equation or inequality, you are going to have two different solutions. So that's really, really important to remember. The first thing that we have to make sure is that the absolute value is by itself. So we look at number five. The absolute value piece is already by itself. When we get to there, that's when we can set up two equations. So the first one would be like if I was counting to the right. X plus 6 could equal positive 7. The second one could be like if I was counting to the left, which would mean the distance was negative 7. And then we just solve each of those like two separate equations. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I get x equals 1. That's one of my solutions. And when I subtract 6 on the other equation, I get x equals negative 13. So we have two possible solutions that both make the equation true. So both of those are good. Okay, this one over here, number 6, is one where we have to do a little bit more work. Because in this instance, the absolute value piece is not by itself. So before I can do anything else, I have to take care of that. Don't forget our order of operations, PEMDAS. We have to do it backwards when we're trying to undo stuff. So that means your first step has to be to undo addition or subtraction. And so that means the first thing we're going to do is subtract 1. A lot of you have been dividing first, so be very careful. So this part cancels. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same. 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 4. Now that we took care of our addition and subtraction, now we need to divide by 2. So I get the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now our absolute value is by itself, which is what we needed to have happen. Once we get to there, that means that now we can start looking at this um, as two equations. If I'm counting to the right, that means that x minus 1 is going to equal positive 2. And if I'm counting to the left, that means that x minus 1 is going to equal negative 2. And so we just solve each of those equations. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So x is equal to 3. There's one solution. And the other one gives me x equals negative 1, which is the other possible solution. Okay, so those are equations. Again, the big things to remember here. Get the absolute value piece by itself. So if you have to do some addition or subtraction or some division first, you need to do that. You cannot, um, we talked about this a lot the other day. Remember, you cannot distribute that 2 into the absolute value. Those are not parentheses. Absolute value has a job, and that 2 is not part of it. So you cannot put the 2 into that group there. Um, and then you're always going to set up two equations. So that's absolute value equations. When we get to inequalities, they get a little bit trickier. You have to remember whether it's going to be an and or an or inequality. And remember that we talked about a couple of different tricks to help us remember. This one is a less than. It's a less than or equal to. But anytime it's less than, that is going to make this an and inequality. And remember, I told you kind of the goofy way that I remember is it's an L. L starts the word land. Even though that has nothing to do with anything, that's just how it helps me to remember. For some of you, that might not help, but some of you, it might. So I'm going to tell you. Um, this one, number eight, this is a greater than symbol. And there was a couple of ways I told you to help remember this. One is that greater than means more than, and more rhymes with or. So that's going to be the one that goes um, with greater than. The other one, the way that I remember it, even though that's not how it's spelled, is to remember greater, kind of sounds like or, even though it's greater, but same thing. That's how I remember it. If that does not help you, then it doesn't help you, but for some of you it might. So even though it's kind of silly, I'm going to share. With an and, 
Remember that the way we set this up, it has to have two less thans in it. Since this is a less than or equal to, that's what we're going to use. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Whatever's inside the absolute value is what goes in the middle, 2x plus 1. And then remember again, we're either counting to the left, that would be negative, or we're counting to the right, which would be positive. Now we have our compound inequality set up without any absolute values left, and we're going to go ahead and solve. Look to the inside to decide what you need to do. We need the x by itself in the middle. So we need to first subtract 1, and we're going to do that in all three spots. So I have now negative 8 is less than or equal to 2x less than or equal to 6. And again, go back to the middle. Some of you are adding 8 everywhere, trying to get rid of the left side. You can't do that. You're going to have three spots and two less thans every single time you do one of these. We look to the middle to decide the next step, which would be to divide by 2. So we get negative 4 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. I don't have to change any signs here because I divided by a positive, but remember, just like with anything else, if that had been a negative 2, we would have had to switch both of the signs. Okay? If we were to graph this, we would have two closed circles, one at negative 4, one at positive 3, and our shading would be in between the two points. Last example here, this one is an or inequality. These ones are a little bit trickier to set up, but it's the same thing. Since it's an or, the signs are not going to match. You can either get smaller or get bigger, but you can't do both at the same time. That's why it's going to be two different symbols. So you're going to have a less than, and you're going to have a greater than. Remember, negatives are the smaller numbers, and less than points to the left, so that's why it goes with the negative. Greater than points to the right, which is the positive direction. So those are what your two um, inequalities are going to end with. And then it's just the 5 minus x that goes with those. Okay. So we're going to go ahead now and solve these. This is an example of one where you're going to have to be really careful. A lot of us keep wanting to add 5 to both sides. But that 5 is positive. This negative belongs to our x. So I have to subtract 5. That's how I get rid of a positive 5. And then don't forget that what you have left is a negative 1x. Negative 1x is less than negative 15. I have to now divide by negative 1. And what's that going to do? It's going to flip the direction of our sign. So x is greater than positive 15 is what we get for this one. On the other one, we're going to subtract 5. Again, the negative belongs to the x. So I have negative x or negative 1x is greater than 5. We divide by negative 1. I don't know if you can hear my dog growling. And we get x is less than, because we have to change our sign, negative 5. So our solution would be this right here. Okay. Um, and if we were to graph this one, remember an or is going to point in two different directions. Now I have positive 15 and I have negative 5. Those actually came out in a different order than what they did here. Make sure you put your numbers in order on your number line. Now if I look at the first one, greater than 15 means bigger, so it's going to be this way. Less than negative 5 means smaller, so it's going to be this way and that would be our solution. So the main thing you need to study when we talk about absolute value inequalities is which is an and, which is an or, and how do you set them up. Okie dokie. All right, don't forget some of the other things that will be on the test is translating the verbal expressions and graphing the inequalities on your own, so you might wanna take a peek at those things too. I will see you guys tomorrow for your test.